Did Jesus Really Live? Eyewitness Accounts. We found in our last video historians from all over the Roman Empire and Greece writing about an extraordinary man by the name of Jesus Christ. News had traveled from one end of the empire to the other about Jesus because he had claimed to be the Son of God. Now that in itself had been claimed by other megalomaniacs, but this Jesus was speaking and acting with the authority of the Son of God, and people were flocking to him. As a rabbi, Jesus had followers that traveled everywhere with him throughout the region of Palestine, and it's these eyewitness accounts that put flesh on the bones of this man. Their accounts were written down in the final quarter of the books called the Bible and known as the New Testament. A testament is the truth written down. The New Testament writers actually knew Jesus because they lived with him, or they were close associates of someone who did. Matthew had been a tax collector, hated by the Jews for working for the Romans. He was educated, able to read and write because he did it for a living. His life turned upside down the day Jesus came by his booth and said to him two words, Follow me. Matthew got up and left his tax table forever. Now, you don't just leave a lucrative business to follow a new rabbi unless he's someone extraordinary. No doubt Matthew had been watching and listening to this man and he saw in Jesus that superhuman life predicted in the Old Testament. He saw Christ's life as fulfilling hundreds of Old Testament prophecies and later was careful to show how Jesus fulfilled the Old Testament prophecies that speak of a Messiah who would rule over a new kingdom, the kingdom of heaven. In writing with this in mind, Matthew was writing primarily to his fellow Jews who would already know about these prophecies. It's figured that he wrote the account of Christ's life called the Gospel of Matthew between A.D. 60 and 65, only about 30 years after Jesus was killed. Mark wrote what most historians think was the first account of Christ's life, perhaps as early as 55 A.D., only 20 to 25 years after Christ's death. Although not an eyewitness himself, Mark was a contemporary of the Apostle Peter, who had lived with Jesus. He probably compiled his account of Christ from sermons that Peter preached. While Matthew was focusing on Jesus as the King, ushering in the Kingdom of God, Mark focused on Christ as being a servant to man. His account is fast-moving and focused more on what Jesus did than what he said. Mark wrote to a Gentile or non-Jewish audience and therefore used very few references to the Old Testament. He wanted to make clear to them that Jesus is the Son of God because no one could do what this man did. And thus, the first line of Mark's Gospel is, this is the good news about Jesus the Messiah, the Son of God. Luke was a Gentile physician and associate of the Apostle Paul. He wrote the Gospel of Luke as well as the Acts of the Apostles. His audience were the Gentiles also, or the non-Jews. As a medical doctor, he was educated and careful with his facts, such as giving precise dates for the events he recorded. Luke was writing his Gospel around 60 A.D. to Theophilus, most likely another Gentile believer and perhaps a Roman aristocrat. And why was Luke writing this letter? Well, here he is in his own words. Having carefully investigated everything from the beginning, I also have decided to write a careful account for you, most honorable Theophilus, so that you can be certain of the truth of everything you were taught. After Luke wrote the Gospel called by his name, he continued the story in the Acts of the Apostles, written between A.D. 63 and 70. It's the story of the early Christian church 
And what happened when Jesus left our world to return to his Father in heaven? In this book, Luke focuses on two of its most influential leaders, Peter and Paul. John, along with his brother James, were both apostles of Jesus. An apostle, in the biblical sense, are those twelve original disciples who lived with Jesus, plus the Apostle Paul, whom we'll talk more about later. John made his agenda explicit in his testimony, called the Gospel of John, when he wrote this, But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing in him you will have life. John opens his account with Jesus in eternity with God. As the unique Son of God, he came to our earth so that he could make God known to us. The Gospel of John is very different from Matthew, Mark, and Luke in that John isn't as concerned with Jesus' actions than with what those actions say about him. Eight times in his account, besides the resurrection, John tells of miracles that prove Jesus is divine. John wrote his eyewitness account called the Gospel of John, three letters to believers, and the book of Revelation before the end of the first century, around 90 AD, still within 60 years of when Jesus died. James, who wrote a letter in 49 AD to the Jews living outside of Palestine, was the half-brother of Jesus. He actually grew up and knew Jesus before Jesus became a famous rabbi. But it's quite interesting that he and his other brothers didn't believe in Jesus, and John recorded this fact in his Gospel. He says this, for even his brothers didn't believe in him. Yes, they believed that Jesus existed because they had grown up with him, but what they didn't believe was that he was the Son of God, as Jesus claimed. James was definitely a skeptic. So what happened that convinced James that his brother was the Son of God? The Apostle Paul records in one of his letters that Jesus appeared to James. No other explanation is given. James the skeptic became James the believer, and he would go on to lead the church in Jerusalem. And like most of the Apostles, he would lose his life for the brother he now called Lord. Peter, who had been introduced to Jesus by his brother Andrew, had left his fishing profession to follow Jesus. He was what we would call a diamond in the rough, brash, impetuous, impulsive, and headstrong. Jesus prophesied that his new disciple, Simon Peter, would one day be Peter the Rock, and that is what he became. The two letters Peter wrote around 63 and 67 AD respectively were to his fellow believers around the world being abused, persecuted, and killed for their faith in Jesus. Peter encouraged his fellow sufferers to stay true to Jesus in their persecution and to live as Jesus would in this world. Peter was not writing pie-in-the-sky advice, for he himself was imprisoned, and then crucified upside down. Jude was the brother of James that we just mentioned, and therefore also a brother with Jesus. And like James, he didn't believe in his brother until after the resurrection. We know for certain that men like James and Jude were amongst the early church believers because Luke records their presence with other believers in the book of Acts. Luke writes this, they all met together and were constantly united in prayer, along with Mary, the mother of Jesus, several other women, and the brothers of Jesus. Jude wrote one short letter around 65 AD. It was a direct warning to the church about false teachers and alarming heresies that had begun to circulate. Like James, he knew Jesus from childhood and was especially keen to hold to the truth. It's interesting that Jude, having been a skeptic of Jesus, made no mention that he was Christ's brother, 
perhaps counting that his unbelief and skepticism made him unworthy of that title. He referred to himself as the slave of Jesus Christ, and so did James. So these are the eyewitnesses who wrote 15 letters of the New Testament. But there is one more eyewitness in this cast of characters that wrote the other 12 letters, and we'll discuss him in the next video.